<laughs> All right, welcome to our lecture online. Sometimes it's not quite as easy as it was in the previous video to come up with the power, the average power, the power factor, and so forth, especially if they just give you a circuit and say, go at it. Here's a circuit. We give you a voltage source. Notice they give us the RMS voltage, not the maximum voltage with the phase angle, and they want us to find the impedance, the RMS current, the average power, and the power factor. So let's start with finding the impedance. We have a two parallel branches here connected in series to the 10 ohm resistor. So that means that the impedance Z is going to be equal to 10 plus these two in parallel. So we use the product over the sum rule that gives us eight times, uh, let's see here. Oh, oh, not quite done because there's another component on there. So here we're going to multiply eight minus J6 multiply that times the J4 and divide that by the sum of the two that would be 8 uh, plus J4 minus J6. All right, so what is that equal to? Well, first let's multiply the numerator. So it gives us a uh, 10 plus the numerator. So this times this gives us a J squared. That's negative 1 times negative is positive, 24. And that would be J4 times 8. That would be a plus uh, J4 all divided by the denominator, we get 8 uh, minus J2. Simplifying that a little bit. So we have uh, Z is equal to, let's see here, I don't want to do that. Let me move this over a little bit, because otherwise we get a little confused here. That would be uh, 8 minus J2. That's better. All right. So we get 10 plus uh, let's see here. Well, we can already combine those. So uh, we have, oh, let me back up here, see? Let me do this again. Okay. All right. So that's um, J times J is negative, times negative is positive. That would be positive 24. So we get 10 plus 24. That would be plus J, 8 times 4 is 32, divided by, here we get 8 minus J2. Now we can go ahead and put those in magnitude phase angle format. So Z is equal to 10 plus hmm, 24 and 32. 24 squared plus 32 squared, that's equal to 1600, that would be 40. So 40 with a phase angle of 32 divided by 24, take the inverse tangent, that's 53.13 degrees. Divided by, that would be 64 plus 4, take the square root, that's 8.246. With a phase angle, that would be a 2 divided by 8. Uh, take the inverse tangent, that would be minus 14.04. Okay, now we can divide that. So we have 10 plus 40 divided by 8.246. That gives us 4.85. Maybe we'll put one more decimal place, and the phase angle, that would be 53.13 uh, plus 14.04, because 67.17. All right, so now to combine those two, we have to then turn that back into uh, the real imaginary part, so Z is equal to 10 plus, that would be, uh, take the cosine of that, and multiply that times 4.851 equals, that would be 1.882. And then plus J, that would be 67.17. Take the sine of that times 4.851. That would be plus 4.471. 4.471, which means that the impedance would then be 11.882. 8, 8, for the real part, plus J 
4.471 for the imaginary part. So here we have the impedance. Again, we can take that and put that into the magnitude phase angle format. So we square that number and we add that to 11.882 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 12.695 with a phase angle of 4.4471. Oh, let me try that again. 4.471 uh, divide by 11.882. Take the inverse tangent of that, that would be 20.62 degrees. So now we have the impedance in both formats. So we've done the first part. Now the next part is to find the RMS current. So based upon that, we can say that IRMS is equal to VRMS divided by the impedance. So VRMS, we were given that. It's right here, that's 165 with a phase angle of zero degrees divided by Z, and that would be 12.695 with a phase angle of 20.62 degrees. And so that will give us IRMS, so that gives us, uh, let's see, 165 divided by 12.695 equals, that would be 12.99, that'll make that 13. 13.00 with a phase angle of minus 20.62 degrees. And so it gives us IRMS. Of course, this would be in terms of ohms. So actually, we want to put that behind it like that. And of course, here, this would be in terms of ohms. And this would be in terms of amps. So now we also have the RMS. I keep writing V. That must be an RMS. RMS current and uh, the impedance. Next, we need the average power. Hmm. The average power, P average, can be found by taking the product of VRMS times IRMS times the cosine of the phase angle. Now, are we given the phase angles? Well, we'll have to figure that out. The, the cosine of phi. Hmm. The phase angle. Well, that would be the same as the phase angle of the impedance, which we have right over here, and it looks like it's a positive phase angle. A positive phase angle, that would mean that we have an inductive circuit instead of a capacitive circuit. That means that the voltage leads to current. That would be lagging power factor. Okay, so we'll get to that, but let's plug in what we have. VRMS was 165. Multiply that times IRMS, which is 13, times the cosine of 20.62 degrees. All right, so we know that this here is called the apparent power. And this here would be the power factor. And of course, the product of the two will give us the average power. So P average is equal to 165 times 13, that gives us 2145. Multiply that times the cosine of 20.62 degrees. Make sure we see that little dot there. There we go. And so 20.62, take the cosine of that. That's 0 0.936, so that would be P average is equal to 2145, multiply that times 0 0.936. And so this is the power factor, that's the apparent power, so the average power is equal to, multiply that times 2145, that gives us 2007, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Now, what are the units for average power? That would be watts. So the average power consumed by the, by the resistive portion of the circuit, and then the power factor is equal to 0 0.936. And is it leading or lagging? Well, notice that the phase angle on the impedance, where are we here? The phase angle on the impedance is positive. Hmm, 
That means that the voltage leads to current. For the power factor, that means it's lagging. So this is a lagging power factor. Because the current is lagging, and the current is what decides the power. And so that's the result of that. A little bit more work. If they give you a circuit, first of all, get the impedance. From that, get both the voltage and the current, if it's not given. And then from that, we go to the average power equation. We get the power factor from that, the apparent power. And then at that point, it becomes a little bit easier. But we have to go to that portion first to find the results that we were looking for. And that's how it's done. And let's see if it's correct. <clears throat> Looks good. Looks all right. Not bad. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> We're good.